this is a course on uh, risk based engineering so today's topic will be failure mechanisms and model unlike uh, probabilistic methods uh, the failure time is important here and what is that failure me mechanism or which is the among the competing failure mechanisms which mechanism is important to the analyst and that need to be analyzed in detail uh, because we want to do not want to go into that a particular kind of failure mode uh, so, so that it affects uh, our system adversely so we'll discuss failure mechanisms and failure model this third lecture actually of physics of failure so um, we have some models which are traditional power law model exponential model they are used extensively uh, for any any modeling and simulation so um, we'll have just a um, brush up through this uh, model and then we'll discuss uh, the electronics related failure mechanisms uh, one of them is uh, electro migration uh, it has to do with the speed of electrons and its uh, damaging effect or adverse effect uh, onto the metallization or interconnects then time dependent dielectric breakdown uh, the transistors they have dielectrics uh, and its breakdown uh, really adversely affects uh, the transistor uh, functioning the hot carrier injection again on time uh, uh, interconnects are uh, this thing and then one very important uh, failure mechanism that is fatty failure uh, mostly it is thermal fatty but even uh, in some system where it is, there is there are vibrations uh, then we have this uh, mechanical fatty also is uh, uh, modeled actually so let us see what uh, what are the failure models that are available so i had mentioned uh, that you know for fmea we require because it is a science based approach we require uh, mathematical model or i would say empirical equations uh, for time to failure uh, and then what we have is uh, the uh, number of cycles um, how um, the that are affecting the degradation because finally we are trying to uh, track the degradation um, for a particular mechanism the model incorporates the environmental loads so apart from the um, apart from the uh, physical construction feature that is strength of the component we also model how the loading factor that is one is environmental of uh, stresses and other one is operational stresses so how the um, environmental uh, temperature humidity um, you know and uh, other uh, vibration uh, how operational stress uh, stre uh, stresses voltage current uh, you know these um, chloride levels uh, they affect our component adversely uh, in terms of uh, time to failure of a component and then uh, as i had mentioned we have power law and exponential and model you can see on the right side these are the model they are, they are very simple and elegant models and uh, objective is to estimate the time to failure okay uh, there is one very very established uh, arrhenius equations for temperature uh, that uh, uh, people are being were using it but now people have found that this equation cannot operate in isolation uh, the environmental load also had to be factored in then only correct results will come so the old state of the art is subjected to review and new models are coming in that is the essence of this particular uh, slide so you can see here uh, time to failure is given by a factor a uh, a and b are material device constant and x uh, is one of the uh, stress factor that is there uh, power law module and uh, time to failure for this so power law module and exponential so uh, we have this exponential uh, exponential model available here uh, so so this is how uh, we have we see the see, this is exponential module module and this is a model sorry and this is the uh, time to failure power law module um, now um, so um, now electronics are available at package level you know they are packed okay um, uh, for enhanced performance uh, and they are we are also able to pack them because the density of the component uh, is increasing why because we want uh, very high performance uh, in terms of time in terms of cycle in terms of speed so uh, now the, this is an era of uh, package 
you know so in that package uh, what are the models and what are their failure mechanisms uh, we have and the, what are the stress parameter that we'll discuss in this slide so let's say first the component uh, uh, failure location is at component level component level as i said it is uh, transistor specific so time dependent dielectric breakdown is the ap applicable mechanism and then failure model is exponential model Fowler Northern's model so it is there and uh, what stresses stress parameter we consider there is electric field uh, in the oxide and temperature how temperature uh, further uh, you know aggravates uh, the situation uh, for time dependent dielectric breakdown um, hot carrier injection again uh, th this was exponential model now here it is a power law module okay so peak current uh, substrate uh, current and temperature uh, so these are the um, uh, stress inducing factors over here and then bore stress and metallization metallization means the uh, interconnects and all those things so there either it is corrosion though on metallization there is a passive one uh, passivation layer is there but still the uh, corrosion and electro migration these two phenomena have been seen electro migration anyways it doesn't get uh, passivation layer may not help but for corrosion uh, we have this passivation layer but still uh, it has been seen that uh, this is a, a failure mechanism which is applicable for board stresses or metallization and uh, exponential model and power law model both are used and here uh, as can be seen relative humidity temperature these two are the factor that affect adversely the metallization or interconnects and the uh, uh, further uh, so here we had metallization and here purely interconnects so fatty and uh, so even solder joints can be an interconnect so fatty and stress migration and non linear power law module uh, this is very famous uh, coffin menson model uh, and uh, exponential model here strain range because uh, we are talking about the uh, mechanical strength fatty related to mechanical strength so uh, this particular factor is there then tensile stress and temperature these are the uh, stress parameter which are which are there actually okay so uh, the complete design of the package has been done to address this kind of stress parameter either internal or external and these are the failure model that are available and the failure mechanism we have covered here and probably in next few slides we will be uh, we will be discussing some of the important failure mechanism uh, especially uh, uh, for electronic components so let us take the commonly used failure mechanisms the first failure mechanism that we will be discussing is and it is related to the metallization so electro migration uh, or interconnections you know so how the failure physically seen on the package or board is like this some crack appears and this particular mechanism uh, is in the th is related to thin film and it is a major concern uh, concern for the uh, development of ulsi ultra large scale integration uh, devices employing advanced design rules advanced design rule means the gap between the two integrand there is a limitation the width and thickness there is a limitation because we want to package more and more stuff into the package so all this limitation come and the um, net effect is you have to manage this kind of failure also then <coughs> electro migration basically what is electro migration it involves migration of metal atoms in interconnect through which large dc current densities so what happens the dc uh, the current that can flow they are almost touching their limits in modern electronics let's say cell phone or any other uh, device uh, they are almost they are touching their limit and uh, 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 this packaging becomes one of the challenges over here and what is the model so mechanism we understood um, migration of electro uh, uh, involves metal atoms in interconnects so and the uh, time to failure model is given by this is a material or process constant here uh, j is the current density which is there in the package and j critical is the uh, uh, is that is the limiting value of the current so th this is this particular factor is causing the problem because there is a very small gap between these two the more the gap then uh, the, then it will be 
uh, much safer. But this gap has to be kept low because we have some physical limitations over here. And then, then this uh, exponential uh, uh, factor over here. Uh, and he, here it is, Ea is activation energy. And there here, this is a Boltzmann constant and again temperature in Kelvin. So this is a very uh, simple and elegant model for electro modeling electromigration. And the Boltzmann constant, its value is 8.6 plus into 10 to the minus 5 electron volt per degree Kelvin. It is related to temperature. Okay. And uh, then we have this, uh, this reference I have got from uh, one uh, book on Capril, Skorzeny and all. And, um, a major part of it is from uh, Physics of Failure, uh, NASA handbook actually we have. Uh, so these two, uh, but all those references I am quoting at the end of uh, this le lecture. This is this was not there in the my reference list, so I have included over here. So you can see here electro migration induced void on board trace. Okay. Now uh, having said this, um, as I said, um, time dependent dielectric breakdown. This particular uh, failure mechanism is applicable only for transistors. So transistor also the localization is the uh, gate oxide, dielectric, you know. So what, what degradation at, of a gate oxide, uh, oxide causes time dependent dielectric breakdown, we will try to understand in this slide, okay. And uh, like earlier we saw, this is the model for time dependent dielectric breakdown, okay. Though it looks complicated, but uh, uh, there are two, three terms here. We can just uh, think about it. So from outside a transistor, three terminal uh, 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 component, it looks like, like this here. And then uh, three terminal, uh, that is base emitter and um, uh, collector. And then we have three layers uh, can function in this switch. So, um, so this is the how it shows in the circuit and how Physically, this thing, this is the source of voltage, the current, uh, and then NPN, this is NPN transistor, and then the emitter, and then base, uh, this thing, VB is the um, leakage voltage, or whatever uh, that you know. Um, so, um, so we have this, uh, so how we can connect, uh, this degradation involves phenomena like leakage current, okay. And finally, leads to short circuit due to failure of transistor gates. Failure of transistor gates. The, the degradation mechanism involves creation of charge traps within the gate dielectric, gate dielectrics, uh, diminishing the potential barrier. This act as a barrier, so barrier is not there. The model is used to predict. It is given here. Uh, N uh, TBD is time for, to uh, time for. Uh, failure of this device due to time electric uh, time dependent dielectric breakdown n is an ambient temperature pre exponent uh, value s electric field s is the electric field and t again is effective thickness of the oxide uh, oxide th thickness over here and delta e is activation energy v is voltage across the system c is experimental demand so uh, c uh, c and uh, uh, there are two uh, factors. Uh, so C experimental factor and T is the ready uh, steady state temperature in the um, that is in given in Kelvin and K is the Boltzmann constant. So um, we have listed all the parameter. Uh, the V is the voltage across the oxide, uh, voltage level across the oxide. So um, all the terms have been explained and uh, uh, for our transistor whatever experiment we do at uh, highly accelerated testing, we can find out the time to failure for the component giving the appropriate loading condition and appropriate physical time, uh, condition of the uh, component involved and its rating actually. So this is about time dependent dielectric breakdown. Now hot carrier injection, hot carrier injection is as uh, um, MOSFET devices, metal ox oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So they are uh, they are applicable to these devices. Uh, we have source, drain, and substrate, and again it is a gate uh, here over here, gate over here, and then finally what it uh, uh, attributed uh, it is attributed to a device high kinetic energy 
the hot carriers are referred to electron okay and uh, it is inside the device attaining a very high kinetic energy due to surrounding high electric field and breaking through interfaces that are not intended such as the get dielectric and forming electronics so you can see the injection is happening from source to drain and some are present or on the get and uh, dielectric okay uh, and the, here the model for this and these are the, uh, these are this phenomena that means the electrons the diver, uh, getting diverted to get dioxide and it is causing the voids and the uh, eventual failures so time to failure is nothing but pure device dependent parameter device are could be material dependent parameter also and uh, i get is the current at the get that is available uh, here i get and then uh, w w is the uh, width of the transistor uh, and case as usual boltzmann constant then activation energy and uh, yeah so w is the width of the transistor n is the power exponent here uh, it is a, a modeling parameter actually okay so uh, this is applicable to mosfet devices uh, more that is hot carrier injection and the damage you can see at the gate and uh, it creates voids uh, and uh, finally it uh, leads to leakage uh, current um if if uh, we discuss about this forty is the most important uh, important failure mechanism uh, especially in electronic devices it it could be cyclic forty loading thermal forty loading that uh, uh, normally they are solder balls so the mechanism is it induces the crack in the solder balls you, you know in the packages okay uh, we can see this figure uh, forty induced fracture of ball grid array. Uh, solder spare joints so these are basically interconnects ball grid array uh, between two lines and uh, that's how here so 40 is the degradation material uh, of material uh, due to cyclic condition it's not only temperature it is the um, it is the uh, loading condition cyclic loading temperature on off that is causing the uh, failure of the ball grid arrays and failure induced by fatigue can include electrical open and loss of temperature control okay um, so you know, it leads to open contacts actually you know solder internal fatigue failures are argue, arguably the most studied electronic failure mechanism we just mentioned solder interconnects are used extensively in electrically and mechanically attached packages of electronic uh, devices uh, to printed wiring boards and to create the electron Uh, electronic circuit necessary to are achieving the desired product function they are in inevitable component uh, because uh, any every package you need it has to have interconnects and they are they and here the workmanship and you know what kind of automation we provide has to be perfect solder interconnects are often subjected to cyclic loading due to power cycling uh, surrounding mechanical disturbances solder interconnects are often subjected to cyclic loading due to power uh i think this uh, got repeated so um so uh, so we have seen what the fatty does and uh, um, 90% of the failure on the right we have been seeing uh, from the electronic board era and all um, the fatty failure or solder joint failure is one of the uh, major uh, contributor to the failure of the systems so having seen that now <laughs> the in the fatty loading also the cyclic loading uh, that is low cycle fatty uh, plays um, uh, you know and the high cycle there are two it can be characterized by low cycle fatty and high cycle fatty and uh, this particular low cycle fatty it takes place at high energy that means it has got a more damaging effect uh, compared to um, um, high cycle fatty uh, like vibration here and all so thermal is doing more damage and you can see the difference here uh, the at high energy level so temperature excursion which normally falls in the low cycle fatty uh, range okay uh, are uh, reasons are the focus of most significant research in the study as i said here solder materials are shown as a strong difference in fatty life under 
large strain uh, range energy. So large strain range energy we have here. The dependence is illustrated in the figure. Now the formulation is again Mason coughing as I mentioned uh, model is there. Strain uh, it is calculated by strain range. Uh, double, uh, and then this formulation and uh, NF is the uh, cycle to failure and C and this thing uh, they are basically the constant solar ductility exponent and B is the uh, solar strength uh, um, uh, exponent and we have this formulation over here. So we found how 40 plays and how low cycle 40 is more de 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 damaging even for mechanical component also it has been seen that low cycle 40 often is the case uh, for more uh, de damage or severity than compared to uh, high cycle 40 and all. So um, the 40 failure if the formula uh, we ignore the second term uh, you know we end up into this formula for temporary cycling induced uh, solar joint the strain terms are frequently ignored and the 40 model is so number of cycle to 40 is equal to half into strain range of 1 divided by this 2 and it is exponent is C complement okay uh, to account for temperature uh, and the whole time because temperature goes up whole time or stabilization time the, if that also be taken into account uh, this uh, factor C we can estimate by uh, the value for this C0, uh, C1, C2, e, EF has been given in the table. This is on SSC 304 for thermal 40 constants actually, okay, from handbook and all. So, uh, we have this model over here uh, where CX uh, are solder material constant. So, these are solder material constant and TSJ is the mean thermal cycling temperature, okay, the mean cycling temperature uh, and TH. TH is the hold time for thin, uh, thin silver copper solder the uh, model constant developed by Osterman and Pet can be found in ta uh, table. These are the constant um, uh, because this is from my book and uh, the book was written by me and Professor Pet. So that's how this knowledge has come over here and uh, I'm happy to share with you. So the you can see their whole time is play also plays a critical role uh, here in uh, giving the parameter of the uh, the 40 failure whatever you want to give. So now once we have this uh, uh, failure mechanism, failure mode uh, and all that information you know, as a, uh, we can visualize our failure mode uh, mechanism and effect criticality analysis FME, FMM ECA. Um, we have to prioritize them. So the prioritization can be done by uh, risk priority number, severity, occurrence and detection. Uh, how easily it can be de de detected, what is the severity number, higher the severity number, the risk uh, number and occurrence number, it's a risk priority number will be here. And once we have these numbers, we can prioritize them actually. Okay. So uh, now here we have discussed in a very brief the host of literature is available on each of these. In fact, there are handbook like documents are available on each of these mechanisms. So further studies can be done, um, lifetime experiment can be planned and finally we can estimate for our requirement uh, what are the failure mechanism and mode on a particular uh, package uh, uh, given the uh, condition, loading condition as well as the strength factor that is geometrical factors and all that. And uh, what we discussed here was electromigration time dependent dielectric breakdown, hot carrier injection and 40. So with this, thank you very much.